I guess um I guess Magnus we just wanna talk about tonight. I don't know what Cliff wants to say, but um just wanna recap and if there's anything that stuck out to you that you wanna mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. talk about. One of the things that I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around or like it hasn't really just the the reality of like lady situation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was. Um. It was really hard meeting Letty today and and. Um, learning about her life. My name is Legend Said. I am twelve years older. Hey. vision for Mary's Meals is that, we, that every child in the world should be able to receive at least one good meal every day in their, in their place of education. And, and we believe that's possible in, in this world of plenty. City is feeding children in schools. What is there more simple? Every woman, every man knows that a child needs food. Without food, can do nothing. The concept of Mary's meals, we deliver food in the context of education. The idea of Mary's meals can change the world. Just food. Good food in schools. Working in the world's poorest communities, so often the poorest children 
can't go to school because they're working, because they're begging on street corners. They're just doing whatever it takes to put the next meal on the table. And therefore they miss out on, on their education, which is the key to lifting the world's poorest communities out of poverty. In India, we're working in, in communities where there are very particular obstacles around education. And in India, the poorest of the poor cannot go to formal schools. The girls in, in communities like the ones where we provide Mary's Meals normally never go to school. Either in the slums or in the rural villages, the girls are treated as uh, second-class children because education of girl children is considered to be useless. Families who traditionally didn't send their daughters to school are, are now sending them to school because they know they will they will be able to eat. Before Mary's meals came, we had a lot of problems. There were a lot of dropouts. They were not coming to school. They drop, they drop out of the school because they were eating nothing when coming from home. A lot of learners were complaining, I'm sick, I'm having stomachache, I'm having headache. It was due to hunger. Maybe because their stomach is, stomachs were empty. The teachers could not uh, impart knowledge to the learners in the manner that it ought to be, because the learners were hungry anyway. So if you are talking to a hungry person, you can as well forget that you are talking to, to anyone. I'm on the moon and me bro mango witty gag mango banga gabina seru and command and do an asaya with ya. In my gun is a pretty screw on the abwin. In my talk with the sacks of goods into the wheel. Which for a yaki sojin chido with Funak Saga suit for a weebeza if I am a certificate our menu dinner. 
Nini mafuna mtaza tala ujinesi. is for these children. I think the immediate thing for these children is surviving. Like, they have to think about the next day. They have to think about whether they'll make it. So hope for them is tomorrow. Will tomorrow happen for me? And it's, re it's really hard, I find it really hard to take it in when you're talking to a child like Letty and, and just, um, when she speaks about things like being hungry and, and, and it's, it's hard to, to really think what that must be like or it's really hard to, to even pretend you can imagine what it's like to be 12 years old and head of your family. You know, I've got kids at that exact same age as at home, you know, and you can't help but make the comparison with their lives or... Even in comparison with, with um, Charlie, that amazing boy in England who does a lot of fundraising for Mary's Meals. First found out about Mary's Meals in Bosnia and uh, I was seven years old at the time and I w well, on the video it said how little it cost to be charged for a year and I was just amazed by that. I thought it was extraordinary. My biggest event I cycled 603 miles from Brighton to Glasgow with just my mum. Two days before Christmas, I got 24 people together to swim one and a half marathons. That's about 40 miles. Put yourself in their position, position, and imagine how they would feel, or how you would feel if you were in their position, where they are now. It's just horrible to think that that they're suffering, and that that could have easily been us. It could have been anyone, any one of us, anyone watching this now. It could have been anyone. It's very different, the commitment of the heart than the commitment of just the pocket, because we have people who have very little money, so to speak, who give, and we have those who have much more who give, and they have the same value. How is it? Brilliant. It doesn't have to be a huge thing. It's the many, many little acts of love that Magnus always speaks about that make this beautiful work. All the time, I think, how privileged we are to have all, all, all this. They, they sleep on the floor, look up at the stars, and that they don't have food, drink, shelter, no, nothing to keep them safe or warm at night. Just, just the cost is so low that even a 12-year-old like me could make such a difference. Like, the difference is unbelievable. I think we all can do so much. and it, We have one life and we have this world and why not make it better? We're such a simple thing, you know? Every child uh, should have a daily meal and if everyone just gave that tiny amount, that, that, could, that goal could be achieved so easily.
I was actually having a pint of beer with my brother one uh, evening in our local pub and we were talking about this news bulletin that we'd seen which described the, the suffering in Bosnia at that time. Over the next 10 years, we began getting involved in all kinds of different places, from Romania to Latin America to West Africa. And it was only 10 years after we got involved in this kind of work that the Mary's Meals campaign was, was born. The thousands of children have died of starvation today and millions of children are out of school because of poverty. And that, that, I think that's crazy, I think that's insane. decided to stay rooted here in this shed that I borrowed off my father. He thought he might do it for a year, but it increased and increased and increased. Wherever he goes, doors seem to just open and open. But although we live in the middle of nowhere, seems to have brought the whole world here. You actually went and saw Magnus at his home, didn't you? Yeah, Tell I did. me about that. I chased him down. We'd swapped a couple of phone calls and I said, OK, I'm coming to visit you. So I went and spent the day with him and his family and saw his charity and all the people that worked for him. That is such a worthy cause because they feed, it's now more than half a million children every it day is. all over the world. <laughs> One of the reasons why we like working with Rab so much is that, that we have a really strong commitment to buying food locally, uh, in country, wherever we work, so that we help the local farmer, we help the local economy. As a matter of fact, almost all the raw materials, except the vitamins and mineral premixes, which comes from South Africa, is all locally produced. The corn and soya, we actually buy from the smallholder farmers. When we say smallholder farmers, they are really peasant farmers having a land average land holding capacity of half an acre at least minimum from 15 to 20000 farmers households are getting affected it's much better to uh, purchase the locally produced product than uh, importing a product and at the same time indirectly it is helping the economy one way or other uh, it is part of the philosophy that the, the community should own part of the processes the reason is simple uh, we don't want to portray them as helpless. We also want to make them uh, empowered to take part in the processes. We had a chance to go through some streets in Eldoret, whereby uh, quite a number of uh, children are living. Yeah. 
trailer at these dump sites are uh, exposed to so many things that I've stated earlier, which end up being actually very, very chronic. You find them with uh, wounds which, which never heals that fast because of they are not well protected, they are not well taken care of. At uh, this dump site with the full of chemicals and uh, debris from factories, they will get diseases. Some of these diseases get even chronic, some even can result to death. So I would say this area is not indeed a good environment for these children. We will be seeing lots of them sniffing glue, of which I know has a lot of effects for their young child. This drug abuse has resulted to, to many of them getting brain damage. They're really hungry. So they sniff all this and don't feel anything. Where they, the, where they used to live with the mom, the uncles, the, the relatives came and sold the land. And then uh, they like, kicked him out, told him to go and uh, just go and sort himself out there. So that's why he's on the streets. He has nobody so far right now to take care of him. When Mel's Mills in came in, there was a research that we people on the ground carried out and we, re we recognized the most vulnerable places. We did and we found this region, there was a need because street children normally, they tend only just to work for food. How many of you feel that uh, if there will be no food in school, you will go to the street? Because, uh, because they don't have enough food at their homes. They are able to come to school and then get the best education which they require. I was going to the street. 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 I was going to the If the feeding program can be given to students, such that students get food, 
we shall not have children in the streets. It's amazing again just to see the impact one, one meal has. And the people who are at the forefront of that are the, the people who make huge sacrifices to get, to get up early at first light, to cook the fires, to make the porridge, to serve the food. You know, in, in Malawi alone, there are 65,000 volunteers who are taking part in this, in this work. The main beneficiary is the child, and this child comes from their villages. People like Angela and India, um, who make big sacrifices uh, to go and do the work that they do so that girls in India can start coming to, to school. Mary's Meal is a project which brings together children of different faith, animators of different faith, delivery partners of different faith. It has got a classical or a lasting uh, purpose and effect and a dream that has to be fulfilled. We are trying to uh, give hope to the children in India. It creates joy. It generates community work. It generates collaboration together. This simple meal brings hope. Or, or whether it be um, Charles or Abel, um, who, are, who are, you know, pulling those kids off the streets, who are changing their lives. For me, one of the, the really important things about Mary's Meals is, is that this isn't about, you know, a bunch of um, rich people from the West charging in and solving everyone's problems in Africa or India or wherever. Um, it's, it's a whole lot of us around the world walking together with the, same, with the same very simple goal that the hungry child receives a meal every day. Mary's Meals helps in this very simple way that it allows volunteers, mothers, to cook their own food for their own children in their own schools. It's a motherly, simple act does something mothers want to do, but if they can't, we have to do it. Most of us go through life wondering if we could help, but not really feeling that we can help. And um, if you get involved in something like this, you immediately help.
it's about a child, it's not about the big numbers and, and it's also about the next child. Um, it's about the next child that's waiting for Mary's meals. So the 